The Trabant, pride of the communist East German auto industry. Introduced in 1959, it changed very little in 30 years. Its noisy and smoky two-stroke engine was a poor performer. It had no fuel gauge, just a dipstick. East Germany had a single-payer auto industry, and because automobiles were rationed, citizens had to apply to get a Trabant, and then wait eight years or more to actually receive it. Once the Berlin Wall fell, the Trabant was history. In the United States, with their fabled car culture, we would never tolerate a lemon like the Trabant. However, there's a movement to transform the U.S. healthcare system into a government-run monopoly, in some ways similar to the system that produced the Trabant. Groups like Physicians for a National Health Program, One Care Now in California, and New York Times columnist Paul Krugman are pushing single-payer initiatives, saying that they would provide health care for all at less cost. They describe it as a system without stockholders, profits, or competition, just like the planned economies of Eastern Europe. However, we don't need to look to the past to see how a system like this works. We need only look at present-day Canada to see the unhappy results when government rations health care. Meet Shirley Healy of British Columbia, Canada. She was suffering from chronic mesenteric ischemia, a condition where the main artery supplying blood to the intestines has become substantially blocked. Oh, I've been sick off for about 11 months. It's a, it's a very serious condition. It can eventually lead to death if not treated. I'd lost 50 pounds up then. She'd lost a lot of weight and she was in a lot of pain and her life was miserable. And a condition like that should be dealt with within a few weeks. Gradually getting worse and worse and worse. If the symptoms are severe and the patient is experiencing a lot of pain and a lot of weight loss, it should be dealt with on an urgent basis. However, Mrs. Healy's condition could not be dealt with on an urgent basis. Because at Kelowna General Hospital, medicine is rationed, and Mrs. Healy's surgery was considered elective. Well, from my office, I phoned the booking department to see how long it would take to get in. And I was quoted a minimum of six weeks, uh, possibly two months. And uh, I talked to her about that, and I phoned them back and, uh, and expressed my concern over that and over uh, concern over a, uh, a previous patient that had waited three months to get in with exactly the same problem. Uh, that poor patient um, uh, basically starved to death. Uh, he came in, we operated on him, and he died uh, 10 days later of heart failure and starvation. Uh, I was very concerned about her waiting a similar period of time. To, to find some operating time, I canceled cases. Uh, I was prepped the mor uh, morning of my supposed surgery. Uh, Mrs. Healy's operation was repeatedly canceled because there was, or it was repeatedly delayed because there was no step down or ICU bed to put her in afterwards. Unfortunately, we have empty rooms up in the intensive care unit and in the step down unit. Even when we cancel patients, those rooms sit empty because they're not funded rooms. The doctor walks in and he said, uh, everything's been canceled. And there was no possibility in the foreseeable future to get her done. He figured a minimum of four months before he'd be able to get me in. She needed health care in a timely mm -hmm. fashion. And I honestly think that I did everything possible that I could think of doing to get her health care other than to directly call the Ministry of Health myself. I guess it's an example of health care rationing in Canada. And he said, I would advise you to get over the border and find somebody and do something. I phoned Rick Baker at Timely Medical. Shirley Healy called me on October 6. Uh, she was desperate. He said, I'm sure I can help you. And I said, and how long? And I think he said, oh, about 10 days. Rick Baker specializes in arranging medical care in the U.S. for waiting and suffering Canadians. In Mrs. Healy's case, he may have helped save her life. This was, um, you know, one of the most dangerous cases I've done because there was really no room for error. Her, her disease had progressed to uh, such an end stage, a procedure that was, had become exceptionally high risk, much higher risk than it had to be. 
So her superior mesenteric artery was about 99% blocked. It is, a, it is a, a brutal form of malnutrition. It's not that these patients aren't hungry. They get hungry, but they're terrified of the, of the pain they know they're going to experience. Shirley Healy paid to get her operation immediately across the border in Bellingham, Washington. I told her that her artery was hanging on by a thread. I think one of the first things he said to me when he walked into the room was, Lady, you were starving to death. There's two types of Canadian patients we see. One are the ones that, that get, get diagnosed um, and then are, have the means to come down here quickly. Uh, they find that the, the system won't care for them, they're willing to spend the money, and so their, their problem can be treated fairly, in a fairly straightforward way. There are other patients that um, don't have the means to come down here and pay the price, and who only in their last desperate attempt, you know, start selling off things, cashing in their retirement funds. Uh, those patients are sicker. Canadians that don't use the healthcare system love it. The people that are using the system, that are on waiting lists, those are the people that don't like the Canadian healthcare system. And there's an increasing number of Canadians who are very fed up. And we have many examples of Canadians that go across the line to Blaine or Bellingham or Seattle and get their treatment right away. They're tired of being in pain. I have people, well, for lesser procedures, that they're, they're waiting years. If you compare a woman who has had breast cancer in Toronto with one in New York, who gets the treatment first, who gets the best kind of treatment, and who lives longer? Some people wait a long time. It's really frustrating. Really, okay. really, really, really frustrating. I can't imagine. You know, the, you go to medical school with the thought that, that these patients, you know, put their lives in your hands and you're there to protect them. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would see anything like this. I'm really disappointed. The Canadian government doesn't own the hospitals or directly employ the doctors. They just pay for everything. However, the results are the same as in East Germany. Government control, shortages, and rationing. Is this what we want for the American healthcare system?